Welcome back. Now we will describe the various techniques of mycorrhizal protection, how to protect against ischemia and reperfusion uh, effects. Now this is uh, just a brief history. You don't need to learn the history by heart, but all you need to know is the summary of events, um, uh, summary of techniques in a more or less chronological method. Uh, that's the purpose of this slide. So um, um, initially, closed heart surgery did not address uh, pathologies in, a, in an adequate manner. So um, Miro suggested electromechanical arrest as we explained earlier it had side effects intolerable side effects so a bicot was launched for 20 years um, non-cardioplegic techniques were used which were even worse as described by Denton Cooley he uh, outlined the phenomenon of stone heart hence electromechanical arrest was readdressed again three uh, research groups looked into it in Germany British Schneider and colleagues in uh, the UK, uh, Hearst and Bembridge and colleagues in, at St. Thomas's, as well as in the USA, Gerald Buckberg. Um, um, uh, all these three um, uh, groups looked into how to achieve electromechanical arrest without the effects, without the side effects, um, uh, um, which prevailed in the rose technique. Again, in brief, Melrose initially used potassium citrate at a higher dose. He did not use additive protective agents. This led to intractable uh, ventricular fibrillation, myocardial necrosis, reduced cardiac output states after uh, surgery, so it was abandoned. 20 years, surgeons relied on non cardioplegic techniques, as you can see here, continuous coronary perfusion, tropically cooled heart, and intermittent aortic occlusion. Uh, technique one, unfortunately, has the side effect of flooding the field, so it counteracts the initial goal of um, having a bloodless still field. Technique two and three require a fast operator in order to uh, achieve it because you are in absolute ischemic state with a um, um, very minimal reduced oxygen requirement. That is um, uh, almost um, you are at the same um, uh, state of uh, of neutral. Uh, oxygen requirement and hence you require a, a fast surgeon which is not always feasible uh, at certain uh, due to uh, the conditions of certain surgeries as well as certain surgeons um, so as we said three groups looked into it the initial group was in germany brett schneider and colleagues looked into avoiding potassium enriched solutions altogether they used hyponatremic solution this had the benefit of stopping the myocardial action potential at an earlier stage at uh, stage zero so hence you are first of all avoiding stage two where calcium uh, um, flows into the cell hence you are reducing calcium load uh, phenomena also uh, you are avoiding the corrosive effect of of potassium itself so you can use a bigger dose a higher dose or initially you can use up to two to three liters initially hence um, uh, reducing the amount of interruptions of redosing uh, required during the course of uh, surgery on the other hand unfortunately this um, has the side effects of one uh, systemic hyponatremia and cellular edema you're using almost two to three liters of hyponatremic solution. Second is uh, um, you're using a big dose, so if you finish before uh, the dose actually wears out, you'll have to wait until the heart recovers. Then the UK group, Hertz and Bembridge, uh, looked into extra serious solution, but with um, more um, uh, details, they used uh, different uh, doses. Uh, also, they used additive protective agents, so they proposed St. Thomas solution. Um, um, the benefit is they avoided uh, the effects of mineral uh, solution. They called it extra zero because in this um, um, in this instant, not only you're using potassium rich solution, you're also using the same sodium concentration as. Um, uh, the extra serial composition. So if you're handed over any bag of cardioplegia with the brand hidden and you're asked what type of crystalloid solution is this, just immediately look at the sodium concentration. If it is hyponatremic, 4 millimoles or less, that means it's intracellular solution. If it is um, um, 144 or uh, 140 or 144, that means it's extra serial uh, solution without looking at the brand. Um, uh, the um, the problem with that is potassium is corrosive. Uh, potassium and rich solutions uh, cannot be given at higher doses, at big doses at the beginning. You have to give them at small doses in repeated forms, and hence you are interrupting the surgery every now and then to give a dose of cardioplegia. Both collectively are referred to as crystalloid solutions. 
Um, in the meanwhile, in the U.S., um, um, Gerald Bugberg and colleague were uh, proposing a solution which can resuscitate the heart after intermittent cross-clamping uh, uh, technique. As you can remember, non-cardioplegic uh, myocardial protection was prevailing at that time, and hence he proposed using a, a solution, a blood solution, which can resuscitate the heart. It contains um, nutrients and stuff like that. So um, uh, it was it seemed only logic if that solution su um, succeeded in resuscitating the heart why not use it as um, um, a means to actually stop the heart or arrest the heart why um, and it succeeded well it was one of the pivotal findings in myocardial protection to the extent that l latest surveys or recent surveys showed that um, um, my, uh, blood cardioplegia is the favored uh, technique in both usa and uh, uk by most surgeons Pros and cons, so blood has very good benefits, it contains hemoglobin, it can deliver nutrients, it has better physical uh, physical properties such as the aerologic effect, that is uh, coronaries are better suited to uh, carry blood rather than crystalloid, it flows better in coronaries, also it has plasma protein so it reduces cellular edema. The only problem, the allele problem, is it obscures the field. Crystalloids are more clear, it makes everything looks clearer. Um, also, it requires a special delivery. You need to understand what temperature, what mode, and what route you will be giving it. On the other hand, you don't need that with uh, crystalloid solutions. The first part of the question was what temperature will we use? Uh, as a natural progress of uh, events, uh, as we said, Bugberg and colleagues used it to resuscitate the heart at normal thermia, so it was only logic to use it at uh, normal thermia first, at warm blood. Then uh, researchers started looking into why not use it as cold. <coughs> Pros and cons. So, if we use it warm, what are we benefiting in here? First of all, you are not f shifting the oxygen dissociation curve to the left. You have better affinity, less uh, affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen, hence you are delivering more oxygen. Also, if you deliver it continuously in a continuous manner, you are avoiding ischemia reperfusion injury at, uh, uh, altogether. That's what we call warm aerobic heart uh, surgery. However, you're losing the hypothermic uh, protective agent, as you remember, the elements of protection, second element of hypothermia. So you're 10 to 20% extra uh, increase in the uh, oxygen requirement. Uh, this is particularly important in case of interruptions, accidents, or prolonged uh, um, uh, interdosing interval. If you have to delay, this will become more profound. So um, uh, hypothermia will mask this, will protect you against this, so interruptions and delays are better tolerated. Um, on the other hand, giving it cold. Um, researchers who are in favor of cold blood allege that actually there is no shift of oxygen dissociation curve. Hypercabria and acidosis, which occur during ischemia, will counteract that shift and actually cold blood is as good as warm blood in delivering oxygen. Um, and you are benefiting, of course, the additive effect of hypothermia. On the other hand, you are suffering the side effects of hypothermia, as we will later discuss in, in uh, the chapter of adjuncts to cardiopulmonary bypass, how hypothermia has both cellular and systemic side effects. <laughs> then, um, uh, the other proposed uh, part of the answer is how to deliver it. Shall we deliver it continuously or intermittent? As I said, once uh, simultaneous was discovering warm blood cardioplegia as a, 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 a manner of giving um, or, or a delivery method of um, um, cardioplegia, uh, proposed was continuous delivery. Um, there is one very famous event which is almost quoted in almost all uh, papers of my protection that is in 1989 by Lichtenstein when he operated on a mitral valve uh, um, replacement uh, uh, surgery and he uh, ended up with unfortunate AV dissociation. Surgery lasted six and a half hours. However, at the end of the surgery where he used continuous warm blood cardioplegia, he ended up with no supports no uh, inotropic supports and the patient unfortunately died later on uh, 18 hours later just because of uh, uh, extension of the uh, AV dissociation beyond the repair rather than low cardiac output. 
So um, he then launched a, a long series of uh, studies and outlined a lot of uh, um, methods and techniques of delivering continuous um, um, cardioplegia. The benefits of that is you are continuously washing the metabolites. You are um, overcoming the, any proximal coronary lesions because you are continuously giving it so the distribution is better. And as we said, you're avoiding ischemia, reperfusion, injury altogether. However, the problem, it obscures the field. It's, uh, the setup is uh, a bit more um, uh, cumbersome. However, uh, the most important uh, side effect, which is uh, quoted in all papers, that actually most surgeons at some stage of uh, delivering uh, cardioplegia will have to interrupt, will have to stop. Uh, delivering because it obscures the field. So there is actually theoretically nothing by continuous um, um, cardioplegia. You, you are interrupting it at certain stages. Some interruptions even last 10, 15 or even 20 minutes. So co uh, continuous uh, cardioplegia um, in, in the opinion of some authors does not exist. You're losing the protective effect. You are subjecting the heart uh, to ischemia, you are losing the additive effect of hypothermia. Uh, Hence, intermittent cardioplegia is um, easier to set up and it provides you with a bloodless uh, field. Uh, then, anti grade versus retrograde cardioplegia. Um, going straight into the benefits and cons of um, um, anti grade cardioplegia. So, anti grade is more physiological. Uh, as quoted by all experimental and observational studies, it protects the RV uh, more than retrograde cardioplegia due to physiological state of, um, um, uh, of uh, drainage of the heart. So basically, if you're giving retrograde cardioplegia, the right ventricle gets lesser dose or less uh, protected um, because most of the uh, venous return of uh, the right ventricle is not actually through the coronary sinus it's quoted to be more through sebaceous veins um, um, so you are delivering cardioplegia through a pipe which doesn't reach all of the right ventricle hence anti is better RV protection less challenging in uh, the setup and uh, delivery uh, mode however anti-grade uh, cardioplegia is uh, non-homogeneous distribution in cases of proximal coronary stenosis difficult to achieve arrest in severe AR and interrupt the flow of surgery. I must here stop at this stage. So AR is a particular challenge in giving cardioplegia. Uh, whenever you're met with a case of AR you need to bear in mind how will you cardioplegia the heart and how will you vent uh, the heart. Uh, in brief options, you can give anti-grade, uh, hoping that the uh, aortic root will pressurize enough. You can help with a digital pressure and hopefully you can arrest the heart. If you don't, you can then alternatively uh, put the cross clamp on, open the aortic root and give direct cardioplegia, either immediately or um, um, after waiting for fibrillation to reduce the uh, um, flooding of the field, if you open it with the heart still contracting, you will flood the field. Also, you risk sucking air into the coronaries and sucking air into the uh, left ventricle. So you can either cross clamp, open and quickly give cardioplegia or cross clamp, wait for fibrillation, then open and give cardioplegia, which reduces air suction into the heart and reduces uh, flooding of the field. Always, as um, um, uh, you can always use retrograde cardioplegia as an alternative for cross clamp and give retrograde. However, whatever the technique you are using for cardioplegia, you must bear in mind you must have a strategy for LV uh, 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 venting because in aortic rigors the heart is susceptible to um, um, uh, distension as well as ventricular fibrillation. Um, this is just, uh, by the way, uh, since we mentioned uh, AR. Retrograde cardioplegia, on the other hand, overcomes the pro proximal coronary lesions um, um, problem. Um, it, um, all observational and experimental studies showed that retrograde cardioplegia protects the LV more um, uh, than, uh, than anti-grade. 
as we said, so one of them supply, um, protects LV more, one protects RV more, um, and it overcomes the aortic uh, regurg uh, uh, issue. Uh, some of the um, agreed or relative indications for retrobrachial depletion, tight coronary stenosis, and uh, of course, as we said, the aortic regurg uh, issue. Also, they do cabbage surgeries to avoid dissemination of uh, plaques down the diseased um, uh, arteries. Also, double triple valve surgeries to reduce interruptions also in redo valve surgeries adhesions may cause aortic regurg and this will lead to distortion of the aortic road so giving um, um, uh, cardioplegia anti-grade could be less uh, effective also adhesions may obscure the lv um, uh, identifying lv distension and hence um, um, you are risking um, distending the heart while you are not aware of it by giving anti-grade. Hence retrograde cardioplegia could be uh, a good uh, solution in that situation. Last but not least, whole blood versus microplegia. The concept is fairly recent. Um, um, basically, instead of giving um, a large amount of blood and uh, constituents and additive protective agents, which increases the volume, causes uh, overload, instead you can give it in small amounts, um, continuously um, uh, using a special pump, as you can see from the diagram. What's the value? Giving whole blood, yes, it causes dilution, but dilution is good. It reduces the clumping of platelets, it reduces RBC uh, uh, rollo formation, and it uh, improves microvascular uh, flow. On the other hand, obviously, it causes overloading and hemodilution, and um, uh, the pathophysiology of bypass as a whole, um, there is a very big uh, part of it uh, which is subsequent to hemodilution and overloading. Finally, this is an uh, MCQ question to test your knowledge. Um, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I would also like to thank my supervisors who helped me in setting up this educational material. I hope I managed to deliver useful information in here and uh, hopefully we'll uh, meet you again in the next chapter of our Southampton reviews in cardiac surgery. Thank you very much. Thank you.